Okay, so we're going to be talking about how we implemented per workspace quota and how that might be applicable to garbage collection as well. So um, what I'm going to start with is the um, code in KCP for quota. Um, I'm going to skip over the admission part since garbage collection doesn't have a component. Um, so we'll just take a look at the controller here. And before I get into the details, um, basically the motivation is that the Kubernetes controllers are obviously not aware of workspaces because those don't exist in KCP. And we either have to take a Kubernetes controller and make it aware of logical clusters slash workspaces, or we have to run one instance of an upstream controller per workspace. The approach that we took with Quota was to do one per workspace. And that was largely because I thought that the changes would be more invasive and harder to rebase if we made the Quota controller cluster aware. Um, we could certainly revisit that decision and we could decide to go either way with the garbage controller. But uh, let me show you what I did for quota. So in KCP, there's a cube quota uh, package and we have a controller in here. And the idea for this controller is that uh, we want to know about workspaces and we want to start uh, a, an upstream quota controller when a workspace shows up and we want to stop it when a workspace gets deleted. So uh, we have an informer on cluster workspaces. That's the, uh, the most important thing here. And whenever we get uh, basically any event, we're going to go ahead and enqueue it and add it to our queue. And let me get down to the process function here since that's skipping over all the boilerplate stuff. So uh, for this one, we're going to get a, um, a key that is for a workspace, and the workspace has a logical cluster component and a name. If we want to know um, the actual combination for where that logical cluster lives, we have to combine them together. So in this case, imagine that the parent is root org and the cluster workspace's name is actually WS. So we join them all together, and now we have a logical cluster in which we need to be doing work. And um, I'm going to, well, I'll talk about this. So this is the, like, if the workspace goes away, then we're going to go ahead and shut things down. And uh, I can talk through the specifics of how uh, specifically we're tracking all this stuff, but we'll get there in a bit. So basically, all you need to know about this part is, Workspace no longer found, shut everything down. Um, so then I do have this cancel funks struct, which is part of what was before uh, what I was just showing. So this is basically a map from logical cluster to some sort of function. And the presence of a logical cluster in this map basically means we've already created a controller, an upstream quota controller for this logical cluster. And so in the event that a cluster workspace is got a whole bunch of informer events, adds, updates, whatever. Uh, if we found it, it's just a no-op here. But if we found it, we need to uh, go ahead and create a and start up a quota controller for this logical cluster. So we create a cancel function, we store it, and then we have this nice helper function here to actually do the, the real work. So um, in this particular case, the resource quota controller has an options struct to initialize it, and that's what you pass in to create it. And so the, the uh, important things to point out are that there is a, uh, a client that is scoped to a particular logical cluster. So when you look at the controller options struct, you'll see it takes in this client. It has an informer. It has a discovery function. So we've got to do things to make all of these things uh, scoped to the workspace that it is tracking quota for. 
And you'll also see, um, so I'm in a, a Kubernetes source code file now. We have made a patch in here to store the cluster name on, on this because it makes life easier. And this is a sort of patch that, from a rebase perspective, is easy to carry. All right, so we set up um, the client that, again, is scoped to the logical cluster. We have a scoping informer, which is scoped to a cluster. I'll talk about that in a minute. Same thing for this informer factory. It is a scoped factory, scoped for the logical cluster. And then discovery, um, the nice thing for quota um, is that the set of resources, the set of API types that we need to potentially quota is the distinct set of built-in APIs, so like config maps, along with all of the CRDs across all logical clusters. And not every CRD is available to every logical cluster, but we don't have to run discovery because we know what APIs are being served. And so we have this uh, shared informer factory that's custom to KCP that knows about all of these built-in types as well as the full set of CRDs. And so there's a helper function here that basically looks like a discovery result and is that discovery data that's the union across the entire um, set of logical clusters. Um, yeah, and so then we start the controller and we, uh, in that uh, discovery or the, the factory that I was talking about that knows about the full set uh, of API types. Um, as part of the quota work, I added the ability to subscribe for notifications whenever a CRD is created or removed. And whenever that happens, we basically uh, tell the quota controller, you need to go redo discovery, so to speak, like go, go ask the factory for the updated um, list of API types, and then it can go and set up evaluators appropriately to do object counts and whatnot. And so here uh, I have a comment that's like, we diverge from upstream. Upstream has a go routine that actually every 30 seconds runs discovery. As I said before, we don't need to do that. So this is a divergence. And then we actually start the quota, and, and that's pretty much the end of it. Uh, so inside the Kubernetes code, basically the um, changes that we made I mentioned that we have this cluster name in here. There's a patch file that this update monitors function, which just going back to the um, this part where we diverge, you'll see that anytime that this factory says API is changed, we go ahead and call update monitors. Update monitors is basically the same code that exists in the main, um, in the upstream, files just removing the 30 second polling. Uh, so this is a copy and paste, but fortunately this is auto-generated. Uh, we have a tool that we checked into our fork of Kubernetes that when we do a rebase, we run the tool and it'll just auto-generate this function based on where it's coming from in, I forget if it's in this file or that one, but um, you know, so there, there are techniques that you may need to do for garbage collection to work around some limitations based on expectations that upstream has that we don't need to uh, adhere to necessarily. Um, the, okay, so the last thing I want to talk about are these scoping informers. So in a shared informer, uh, as I imagine you're aware, you have typically will have a controller that um, will add an event handler like this. In the case where we're trying to multiplex and create one quota controller per workspace, the resource quota informer, or any informer for that matter, there's still just one of them because it's shared. And so what I did was I wanted to avoid a situation where inside of the quota code, and let me show you, um, for example, where this is used, it'll be clearer. Um, 
think it's this. Give me a second just to get to where this is used. Okay, so here we go. So this is deep inside of the quota code, but at some point it decides there's a new GVR. I need to go get the informer for that GVR. And assuming I can get that informer, I need to add an event handler uh, to that informer. So let's take config maps, for example. There's one config map informer. It spans all of KCP, all workspaces, all namespaces. And if we have uh, five different workspaces, we're going to have five copies of this resource quota monitor running, um, one for each workspace. And so if it's adding an event handler to the config map informer, then it's basically going to add it five times, once per workspace. And rather than doing that, where it's actually it's impossible to unregister an event handler from a shared informer, and given that we know workspaces will go away when they get deleted. We need to unregister the event handler so that we don't try and dispatch to, to these monitors that are also going to get deleted when the workspaces do. So we have this scoping factory that basically it wraps a real informer factory. So this would be the, the real um, Kubernetes one. And it has a dele delegating event handler. So basically, whenever you ask for a scoped factory for a logical cluster and you get all the way down to um, you ask for an informer, and then when you get back the informer, eventually um, you try to add an event handler. Where's my code here? I'm not in there. Um, it's a different what file. What's that? that? It's in a different file. You have to open the yeah. delegating event handler. Yeah. So when when it gets around to saying, like, I would like to add an event handler, there's logic in here. I'm not going to go into the details right now, where it basically registers one handler per type. So if you want to get informed on config maps, uh, it'll register for config maps. And then it just multiplexes and dispatches out to all of the individual um, uh, individual instances that are started down at the bottom, down in here. All right, let me stop there. I know I went through a ton. I'm sure you all have questions. And we can go look at GC as well. And I'll, I'll tell you uh, how it's going to be a little bit different. But what questions do you all have? Um, so the, the thank you. It's very, very, uh, I see how it relates to the GC work. So the, the the first, I guess, question that I would have is: you you made the deci the decision to have uh, one quota controller per workspace. So you you've mentioned the reason that I mean upstream changes and stuff like that. So to you, would that apply for the GC as well? I I, I guess that's where I would start. Um, so if you go look at the um, yeah, the upstream. If you go look at the garbage yeah. collector, um, yeah. so it has a REST mapper. This obviously will need to be um, hmm. cluster scoped yeah. uh, because if it's, I mean, it doesn't have to be. You could try without it. You could try just using the same discovery that we did for quota. Um, the so that, I mean that may work. Uh, alternatively, you could try and get it scoped per logical cluster, but you may not need to. The metadata client will need to be scoped. Um, I mean that's a queue. That's a queue. The graph builder and the reference caches. Um, I mean we this has a REST mapper. It's got monitors. It's got um, you know all of this stuff. Like these are going to be per um, per logical cluster. And so if you if you decided that you wanted to make the garbage collector cluster aware, then essentially anything in here that's singular now has to become a map from yes. logical cluster yeah. to instance. And you've got to lock that and maintain yeah. all of those. And then you know all of these um, queues, whenever you DQ, whenever you in queue and DQ, it's going to have the logical cluster in it. You're going to have to deal with the key. You're going to have like getting it to be scoped to the right logical cluster. So 
I would probably start trying to model it after quota because I think it'll be less work, but I don't know. <laughs> That's just my take. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I, I do look at the the upstream, the graph builder stuff. It may be possible, but I mean, it's pretty complex. And as you mentioned, we would have to, they, they, they have deep down a struct that uh, is supposed to uh, keep the, the field that identify a, a resource. And we would have to start there at the logical cluster and then bubble everything up to uh, yeah. the world graph. Uh, Plus, we would have to fork it, obviously, <laughs> and and there would be no chance that it's accepted. I guess. Oh yeah, I mean, I, I, we're not we're not super worried about trying to get this stuff okay. upstream. Okay. Like maybe it'll happen yeah. at some point uh, if Kubernetes ever latches onto the concept of logical yeah. clusters. But um, I mean, basically, if you find that you're having to make so many changes that like any any relatively small patch that goes in upstream would basically make yeah, rebasing exactly. yeah. crazy exactly. hard yeah. you know <laughs> don't, yeah. then i would say let's see if you can okay. uh do it like quota so you know if you look at the rest mapper basically um you pretty much need to have one of these per logical cluster or you just say eh, you know we're we're going to be tracking we're going to be scoping the clients and we're going to be scoping the informers so if the rest mapper has more data than is in a single logical cluster maybe that's not the end of the world mm -hmm. on the other hand we have to think through like would there be a situation where the garbage collector like you have to see what it uses in the rest mapper but like if it said give me the the resource for a given gvr give me the kind for a given gvr given that two workspaces can have the same gvr but one can be a CRD that looks like this, and a, another one can be from an API resource schema. We may need to do it per logical cluster. Um, I just I haven't thought through that to see exactly what the implications would or wouldn't be. But you know, just looking at this, this is going to call reset. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, and we call get. We call rest mapping. Like those are the two functions that are used here. And rest mapping gives you a preferred rest mapping given a group kind and maybe a version. So, uh, I mean, this is just going to give you a GVR and a GVK. I think the only issue you might face there is if like the preferred version was different between mm -hmm. two different workspaces, it might see the wrong thing. Um, the other thing I saw was that the graph builder had a rest mapper. It calls kind for, so you've got to also account for that as well. And that's just going to give you a GVK from a GVR, which shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, I mean, I would just, I would, you could try doing one. And then if you, if we run into problems, we can make it cluster scoped. Yeah. And then um, anything that takes in the informers. So let me, yeah. So this is going to do a for resource thing, an add event handler. So you'll just you'll want to do the same thing that we did for quota. And fortunately, you don't have to copy any, or you know, have to write anything new. Um, we'll just uh, yeah, we'll expose this, export it, so you can. Um, well, you know, move it to a common package for scoping, uh, make it so that you can instantiate it from other packages, and you'll have like a cube quota reconciler like we have now that uses it. You can have a cube GC package that uses it as well, and then you'll just pass that all the way down into um, the constructor here, and then it'll be good to go. Yeah. So yeah. So assuming that we go for that one controller per workspace for the I would start with that yeah yeah for for the discovery part is there anything that changes from what you did for quota you 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 mentioned that it may be slightly easier because you had i mean you you was able to you were able to know the set of types it was i mean the, the set is still the same yeah. um so 
actually, so quota, quota is a little bit, well, no, I think GC. It's not clear to me what would that be different. Uh, no, so what I was thinking about was what data it is used by quota yeah. and used yeah. by GC, and it's only metadata. Like yeah, exactly. Except, so in quota, we didn't enable yet anything beyond counting. Um, Kubernetes mm. has quota on CPU, in pods, yeah, memory, yeah. Uh, like node port services that uses spec data. That's not enabled right now, and we're going to have to figure out how to deal with that. Uh, eventually, but I think for garbage collection, given that it's only looking at owner references, uh, you'll you'll be able to use that factory, and the um, the rest mapping information won't matter. Like because the way that that special factory works is it does a partial metadata cross cluster list and watch. So if ten workspaces each define their own variant of the same CRD and yeah. the spec fields are different, the metadata is the same for all of them. And you can just use that informer, which and so if you basically say like, give me all the widgets, you're going to get the metadata for all the widgets and you're not going to get any of the, the spec information, but that's perfect because that's exactly what you need. Yeah, that kind of relate to another question that I with yeah it was uh, related to the identity you know to be able to differentiate multiple uh, flavor of the same yeah. api so based on what you've just said it doesn't really matter it doesn't matter not not for gc because like yeah. all we need to know is <laughs> what logical cluster it's in what namespace is it in what is its gvr and what are its um owner references yeah. And that's common regardless of how the schema is defined. OK. So I actually don't think this will be too bad. Um, yeah, yeah but, well, you, you did the, most of the work. Oh, the yeah. Same. I mean, that part was hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Which wasn't there when we we I mean, started the discussion like months ago, but now, now you did yeah. that for quota. It should be a lot more easier yeah, than, than yeah, without it. OK. Um, well, at least, I mean, that was the main question, the main criteria. So I, I guess maybe as we have a few, few more minutes. So are, are there any performance concerns to go the, the way of running multiple controllers instances? Uh, compared to a single one? Uh, I mean, you're going to have more queues. You're going to have more Go routines processing the queues. But for right now, um, it's, it's OK. It's OK. Yeah. We will be doing scale up testing eventually, and we'll make decisions based on the results as yeah. to whether we need to take a different approach. Sounds good. But also, like, I would say, as we like as a kcp installation scales and you have more users and more workspaces at any given point in time there's going to be some you know sort of high watermark in terms of what's active on average and it's not going to be or presumably won't be the entirety of the key space so hopefully we can sort of amateurize the go routine and compute mm -hmm. costs across a bunch of relatively small and not so active workspaces, but we'll see what the, the activity patterns look like. Um, so do you think that given this intro and walkthrough, you'd be able to have some time to work on this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think with what you've uh, just shown, it should be uh, I, I guess I sh uh, at least I, I feel like I should be able to do it. But we'll see. But uh, yeah, I'll work on it for for the next couple of days and see how that okay. goes. Yeah, um, I mean, feel free to to reach out and say like, "Hey, does yeah. this look okay?" Um, or ask clarifying questions. Like, we're here to help. No, that's great. I I I uh, how could I say? Um, I took the freedom to to reach out because it, it's it's really um, annoying for existing controllers. They assume that it's. I yeah. mean, they, they rely on it a lot. Like MLK, we, we have, uh, yeah, pretty much all our resources are 
depending on each other using uh, on our references and then and it's yeah uh, beyond no, I, I get it it's in, just you yeah. know timing wise yeah it's, right <laughs> it's later in our schedule so if uh, you've got time um, yeah. love the contribution yeah okay sounds good to me um no, no that's awesome i mean sounds like a, yeah it should be that that uh hard based on the work that you did with quota so yeah Awesome. Good to work on it. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Um, so I know Steve had a semi-related question. Uh, do you want to talk about that now? Uh, sure. I think it's probably not super uh, productive for GC. Okay. Um, so we we can I, wait. I, yeah, I'd appreciate your time, though. Yeah. Um, Daniel, do you have any questions or thoughts? No, it was uh, super helpful just to be able to kind of be a fly on the wall here. Um, I've kind of come through uh, uh, some of the issue backlog and just kind of picking up some stuff to get my feet wet a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, it's super helpful. Appreciate y'all letting me join in. Awesome. Thanks. Cool. All right. Well, um, Antonin, if you don't have any other questions, I think Steve and I will probably just stay on here and chat about um, whatever it is he wants to talk about. <laughs> Do you want me to stop the recording or? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's stop it.